Hello everyone. Here's a video to explain how to fade characters in and out in Godot. Uh, it can be very useful uh, at times to be able to make characters turn invisible or partially invisible, and it's not as straightforward as you might think to be able to do that. So this is a bit of a, a tutorial to explain how to implement this useful special effect, and uh, all right, on to it. All right, let's get started. Let's begin by creating the character that we're going to turn invisible. Uh, I have here a file that I exported from Blender. That's going to be our character file. Let's drag that on top of Node 3D, uh, the root of our scene, so it appears in our scene. And now let's create a node that's going to be the root of our character. Let's create a new Node 3D. Make this character model uh, a root of our character, and let's change that name to Minotaur. Okay, now, right now, this is just a part of our scene. We want to turn this into a separate scene so that we can have multiple versions of this character in our scene. So let's right click, go to Save Branch as Scene, and we're going to save it as Minotaur in the character directory. This is fine here. And you can see uh, it just appeared right there in that folder, which means that uh, we can put multiple of these guys in our scene even drag them directly into the scene like that. Okay, so there's our characters. Now we're going to need to edit the material on this uh, character so that it's possible for it to fade out. So let's uh, save this and then we'll click on this icon to open up our Minotaur character and now you can see we're in this scene. Now by default, uh, blend. Uh, files exported from Blender or any other 3D program come in uh, in a form where you cannot uh, work with their pieces. We cannot change the material on this as it is. So the first thing we have to do is right click and click Editable Children. So now it does become possible to see and edit the pieces inside of uh, our file. So if we click on Body here, uh, you can see that the default mesh comes with the material that was exported by Blender, but uh, if you open these little panels here, you can see that nearly everything is grayed out, so uh, we can't work with uh, the material that was exported. We're going to have to create a new one. So that's what the surface material override is for, and this is where we're, to, where we're going to create a new material. Now I'm going to start off by doing this the wrong way, just to demonstrate something. Now what you could do is come over here and click on Empty, and click Standard Material, and then click on that to open it up. And uh, this gives you the albedo, which is just allows you to play around with the colors. Now, you might uh, initially think you can make this guy turn invisible by just coming up here to Transparency, clicking that over to Alpha, and then clicking on uh, the color and playing with that. But you'll notice there's a lot of weird artifacts in the viewport if you do that. And this comes down to how 3D uh, renders uh, transparency and uh, with uh, the depth buffer. So when you're drawing opaque geometry, every time you draw a polygon, not only does that draw a color to the screen, but there's also a special hidden buffer called the depth buffer that um, uh, keeps track of how far back in the scene things are, so that if you draw one polygon in front of another polygon, it can consult the depth buffer to figure out whether or not the pixel you're drawing is in front of or behind another pixel that's already been drawn. Uh, if you're just drawing opaque ge geometry, this is fine because that's a great way to make sure that you only draw over top of existing pixels and you never you know overdraw a pixel that is in front of the pixel that you're trying to draw. However, this uh, really messes up when you switch over to transparent uh, drawing, which uh, don't really have uh, a uh, depth buffer. So, or, or to put in other words, you can see here, uh, we have an artifact of the tail. What happened is the uh, chest was drawn first, and then the tail was drawn on top of it, but because it was transparent, there was no depth written, so we actually see the tail in front of everything else. And we're getting a lot of other weird artifacts too here. 
So we're going to need a better strategy. We're going to have to take control of the depth buffer, uh, draw it uh, manually, and then draw all the uh, color information on top of it in order to get it to uh, handle transparency properly. So uh, let's back up. Let's click on that icon to get rid of the material we just created. And this time we're going to create a new two-pass material. Uh, first we're going to draw the depth and then we're going to draw the color. So first we're going to create the uh, texture that just draws depth. So we're going to create a, a new shader material. And this is a special shader where uh, you are sort of programming the shader directly and not using the defaults. I'm going to click on uh, shader, empty, uh, new shader. Make sure this is set to visual shader and click create. And now we can click here to open up our visual shader. And now we're going to uh, set some modes and flags and also uh, add some nodes over here. So let's start off with the modes and the flags. Uh, we're going to set this to uh, depth draw is going to be always because this is the depth, depth shader. We always want to have the depth drawing. And uh, we're also going to set the depth prepass uh, alpha to on and unshaded to on and the uh, shadows disabled. Now these two flags here are more just optimizations. We're not drawing any color, so we don't care about shading and shadows. So we can just skip that there. Uh, and the last thing we need to do is uh, get rid of all the color information. Right now it's just drawing a default white for every polygon. So let's right click there, come down here to scalar, uh, variables float constant, and we're going to take the zero and write it into the alpha channel. And there goes all the color. So what we have right now is a shader that is just drawing pure depth information. Oh, and uh, you can sort of see at the edges here where uh, where our uh, mesh is sort of uh, occluding the uh, orange lines in the background. So that's how you know that there actually is depth here. Uh, it's uh, sort of cutting out stuff that's behind it in the background. And uh, let's see, did I forget anything? Yes, resource. We're going to click this uh, local to scene on. This is going to be useful later on when we have multiple characters in our scene and we want them all to have independent uh, materials. And let's see, did I forget anything? Okay, that should be good. Next, we are going to need to add the color back in now that we have the depth information. So we're going to come down here to next pass. And this is going to be a new standard material. And this time, when we turn on the transparency flag, it should be a lot better. Uh, let's set that to alpha. And you can see no immediate artifacts, although it's not perfect yet. We have to make some more changes. Uh, depth draw is going to be uh, never, because we've already drawn the depth. And we're going to set render priority to 1. And uh, last, uh, we're going to uh, play with the albedo. If we click on the uh, color there, you can now see if we bring that down, we now fade out without any issue. And that should be true from the back too. Oh, no, we need to change a few more things. One more thing, let's click down to resource, local to scene on. This guy uh, turned off for some reason. Let's just make sure that's on again. And let's see. Okay, I uh, just paused there for a second. Um, so I was able to fix that, fix that just by clicking that off and on again. Uh, I'm guessing that for some reason uh, Godot hasn't didn't update our shader, but uh, it should be fine now. Uh, I'm using the beta 12 version of Godot 4, so there might be a few issues, but as you can see now, uh, transparency is enabled, and uh, by setting the f everything up this way, we have gotten rid of those artifacts. And if we take the albedo down again, see it's rendering pretty smoothly except for those eyes. And uh, one last thing, we're going to drag in the texture here so that we are rendering in the correct colors. 
Okay, now we're going to want to copy the shader from the body to the eyes as well, so that we have this on all the meshes. And let's just double check. Uh, yep, yeah, local scene is both on. This looks good. Let's close that. Now we're going to right click and copy. And let's save that. And let's come over here, right eye. Going to right click and paste. And same here with left eye. Okay, and now we have the same material on all three of these. So that means if we open that up and if we make any changes with the albedo, that is going to fade them all out at the same rate in the same way. All right, looking good. Okay, so we've got the shader itself working, but now we need to be able to access it from code because it's not very convenient to come in here and have to uh, fiddle with the albedo uh, slider every time you need to fade this guy in or out. So we're going to add a script to this guy. I'm going to click on the root node, click the uh, script icon here to create a new script. Let's create that. And uh, let's get rid of the shader editor there. And now we're just going to uh, type in a little bit of code to give ourselves a um, parameter on the root of our uh, character so that we can change his uh, settings easily. So let's start out, start out by uh, exporting a variable called opacity. And this can go from zero to one. Okay, and let's see. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is get that mesh. And uh, let's just get the node. So you can see it's sort of buried in the tree here. So we're just going to, going to right click on body and go down to copy node path and we'll just paste that over there so we know we're getting the right nodes from inside the tree there now let's uh, get that material off of it that we just created uh, So this is going to return the uh, root depth shader. Uh, wait a second. Did I spell that correctly? Oh, this is a mesh, not mesh. That should be better. And uh, so this is our first pass. This is the depth shader. Uh, we're going to want the uh, second pass, which is the color shader, which is the one that is we're actually going to be changing the opacity of. So let's get uh, mat one is. Also a material. Okay, and now let's oh, material zero, not one. And uh, now let's actually set it. So mat one dot uh, the albedo color is going to be the color white, followed by uh, opacity for the alpha and uh, this next line is just going to be an optimization uh, we're going to set the transparency uh, state to uh, off if uh, it happens if we are fully opaque uh, it's going to be transparent it's going to be disabled if the opacity is too high alpha if uh, opacity is something less than one and again this is just an optimization um, uh, transparent objects 
are a little bit heavier. They uh, take a little bit longer to draw. You're probably not noticeable in a scene as small as this one, but if you have like hundreds of these guys, it could be an issue. So we're just going to turn off the transparency if we don't need it. And uh, one last thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here, add another directive so that uh, we're going to make this a tool so that the process runs even if we're in edit mode. Most of the time, usually this uh, code here would only run if you're actually running the game. But if you add the tool flag up there, then this runs in the editor too. So it becomes possible to see uh, your changes to the model in the editor. So let's pop back into 3D mode and come back to the main scene. And here are our three monitors. And if you look over here in the inspector, here's the new opacity property that we added. So if we bring that down, you can see our monitor fading in and out. And if you remember uh, back here when we were setting this up, uh, we uh, made special care to make sure resource local to scene. These are both checked. If these aren't checked, then you're going to find that when you fade one of the opacity sliders, that affects all of them, which is probably not what you want. So just make sure that um, these flags are both checked, uh, or local to scene is on for both of these. And that means that when you uh, change the opacity slider for one of these, uh, it is going to affect just that one character. Okay, and that is how you make characters fade and out. This is good for death animations when you want your character to disappear slowly, or maybe you want them to be sort of a ghost or something. Uh, however you find this useful in your program, um, go for it, and I hope you are able to use this to really enhance your programs and do some great stuff. All right, thanks for watching.